Number 7. Faster Horses Incident In July of 2021, three young men were found dead in a camping trailer while attending the Faster Horses Music Festival in Michigan. The event, which takes place at the Michigan International Speedway, is also known as the three-day hillbilly sleepover, as most festival goers will typically camp in and around the racetrack. After a concerned friend of the group had called the emergency services, first responders arrived at the scene and opened the camping trailer to find five men, all of whom were unconscious. Dawson Brown and Richie Mays II, both aged 20, were pronounced dead at the scene, as was 19-year-old Cole Silva. All three were Michigan Center High School graduates who'd played on the same football team. 20-year-olds Rayfield Johnson and Curtis Stitt were taken to the hospital in critical condition but ultimately survived in what Lenawi County Sheriff Troy Bevier deemed to have been an absolutely tragic event. It was determined that the men had suffered from carbon monoxide poisoning. They hadn't properly stored a generator they'd been using, which resulted in them inhaling the deadly fumes. In the aftermath, Sheriff Bevier issued a warning to people using generators, urging them to make sure such devices were kept in a well-ventilated area. Number 6. Michaela Hostetler after she'd attended the 2018 edition of the Faster Horses Festival in Michigan, a young woman was fatally struck by an SUV. On July the 23rd, Michaela Hostetler, aged 19, was walking on the shoulder of the road near the Michigan International Speedway alongside her boyfriend, 21-year-old Colin Campbell. Even though the festival had just ended, a number of attendees were reportedly heading to after parties. Shortly after 4 a.m., 17-year-old Jose Mora was driving his 2005 Chevrolet Trailblazer north on Brooklyn Highway. By his account, Mora glanced at his gear shift and only peripherally spotted the couple before plowing into them. He denied that he'd been looking at his phone prior to the collision, although a test revealed it had been used seven times between 4.10 and 4.20 a.m., a timeline corresponding to that in which the accident was suspected to have occurred. Hostetler sustained mortal injuries while Campbell was left in critical condition. He had no recollection of the crash after sustaining traumatic brain injuries for which he spent considerable time at an inpatient rehabilitation center. There were no charges filed against Mora as prosecutors deemed there wasn't enough evidence to pursue a criminal case. At the time of the accident, he was under the limit for alcohol consumption and there was no irrefutable indication of moving violations or distracted driving. Number 5. Luella Fletcher Mitchie An hour before her 25th birthday on September the 10th of 2017, a woman died in the woods at the edge of the Bestival Music Festival in Dorset, England. Luella Fletcher Mitchie, daughter of Scottish film and television actor John Mitchie, was attending the festival with her boyfriend, Sion Brufton, aged 28. The aspiring rapper had reportedly procured the recreational drug 2CP, classified as a Class A substance, and given it to Fletcher Mitchie. He then filmed her over a period of six hours as she began to hallucinate on the drug and beg for help, leading up to her death. At various moments in the harrowing footage, Fletcher Mitchie tried eating thorns and had begun to slap herself in an evident state of confusion, with Brufton at one point calling her a drama queen. In spite of her being in distress, Brufton didn't take her to the festival's hospital tent, even though they were only several hundred yards from it. Prosecutors would later argue that it was because he feared repercussions, stemming from a suspended prison sentence he'd been given about a month prior. Fletcher Mitchie began shouting for her parents and eventually talked to them on the phone. They immediately began the 120-mile drive from London to Dorset but unfortunately arrived too late to find her alive. It was subsequently argued that she was already dead at Brufton's feet in the last video he'd taken of her. He was arrested but defended his actions by claiming that he didn't want to leave Fletcher Mitchie alone in the woods to get help and that he only thought she was having a bad trip. He was found guilty of manslaughter by gross negligence in February of 2019. His eight and a half year prison sentence was overturned on appeal and only a drug charge remained. As a judge determined, prosecutors had failed to prove that Fletcher Mitchie would have survived had she received help. Number 4. Isabella Simetta Texas teenager Isabella Simetta suffered a fatal gunshot wound to her abdomen while at a renaissance fair on October the 25th 
of 2020, the authorities responded to reports of a disturbance at the Texas Renaissance Festival campgrounds in Todd Mission at around 2.40 a.m. 19-year-old Simetta and Sean Campbell, aged 22, were acquaintances who traveled to the festival along with other friends. Another attendee, Mitchell Heasley, told investigators that he and Simetta had gotten into an argument. Campbell then intervened and put a gun to Heasley's head. According to a probable cause affidavit, an altercation ensued with the former attempting to disarm Campbell. During the struggle, the weapon discharged and a round struck Simetta, who later passed away. Campbell fled the scene but was later found in a car with a six-hour 9mm handgun in the glove compartment. He admitted to firing the shot that killed Simetta and was held at Grimes County Jail on two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Number 3. Astro World Crush On November the 5th of 2021, a massive human crush occurred at the Energy Park in Houston, Texas. During a performance by rapper Travis Scott, on the first day of the Astro World Festival. Eight people died on the night of the concert and two more passed away from their injuries over the following days, while at least 25 were hospitalized. Live Nation, along with its affiliates, operated and managed the disastrous event, which was also streamed live by Apple Music. Since the morning hours before the scheduled opening, groups had begun breaching checkpoints and flooding the venue. As noted by the Houston Police Department, volatile crowd behavior continued into the evening with hundreds being treated at the festival's aid stations. There was no act on the festival's second stage, therefore the estimated 50,000 in attendance all assembled outside the main stage to watch Scott, who was also the festival's founder, as he began his performance at 9.02 p.m. Houston Fire Chief Sam Pena would later tell the media that the crowd began to compress towards the front of the stage, while also surging from the sides and the concert rapidly devolved into chaos. Concert goers began falling and trampling over each other. Multiple sources, including forensic analysis and video evidence, indicated that at least one attendee was fatally crushed under a mass of people right at the concert's onset, with no evidence he ever got up again. Ten minutes into Scott's performance, a tightly packed group of fans in the crowd's southern quadrant began screaming for help. Those who died or suffered critical injuries are believed to have suffered compressive asphyxiation after being forced into as little as 1.85 square feet of space per person. Medical personnel couldn't reach those in need as piles of fans were nearly two-person deep in some areas. In the pandemonium, there were instances of unconscious fans being crowd-surfed to safety. Many had started chanting for the show to be stopped while one woman was filmed climbing a ladder to the media tower and pleading for help from camera operators. A man joined her shouting, people are dying, while elsewhere in the crowd fans had started dancing on top of ambulances, fruitlessly trying to get through. Scott had paused his performance a total of three times throughout, once to report that someone had passed out, but continued singing after each one, encouraging more fervent reactions from his fans. The concert ended at 10.12 and gained widespread notoriety in the aftermath. The investigation is ongoing, but a number of lawsuits have already been launched against Scott and the festival's operators. While there had been considerable problems with the festival's overall organization, the rapper himself was also heavily criticized for not stopping the concert or attempting to better control the crowd. Today's topic was requested by Victor Alexander, Jayanath R. and Amanda Stapleton. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Alexandra Ross King In January of 2019, a young Australian woman died of an MDMA overdose at the FOMO Music Festival in Parramatta Park. While heading to the event, 19-year-old Alexandra Ross King and her friends had stopped in Gosford, where they bought drugs from a local dealer. They then took a bus to the festival held in the western part of Sydney. Because drinks at the event were so expensive, the group decided to arrive already drunk and consumed juice mixed with vodka on the way. In about half an hour, Ross King took roughly three quarters of an MDMA capsule, which she washed down with alcohol. Before entering the FOMO festival, she ingested two more capsules at once, nervous that the police might find the drugs on her. She spent the next few hours dancing as temperatures climbed up to 95 degrees Fahrenheit and drinking vodka mixed with Red Bull. She then began to feel unwell and her friends helped her to a medical tent. 
where she began to suffer from muscle spasms, high fever, and irregular breathing. The teenager was rushed to Westmead Hospital where she suffered multiple cardiac arrests and ultimately passed away. Two unnamed men aged 20 and 23 were arrested in the aftermath by Gosford police for indirectly supplying the drugs that had claimed Ross King's life. Number 1. Mawazin Stampede Shortly after midnight on May the 24th of 2009, a deadly stampede occurred at a soccer stadium in Rabat, Morocco, during the Mawazin International Music Festival. A free concert by pop star Abdelaziz Stati had begun later than billed, allowing festival attendees who had finished concerts at other locations to make their way to the Hay Nada Stadium. The stampede occurred towards the end of the performance, when many of the 70,000 in attendance tried to leave the stadium at the same time. A wire fence collapsed as the enormous mass of people began overflowing out of the venue. Eleven concert goers died, with their bodies only discovered after the stampede had ended, and at least as many were hospitalized. Rescuers subsequently had to pull survivors from the wreckage. The governor of Rabat at the time blamed the tragedy on the concert goers, claiming they decided to go over the metal barriers to have a quick exit. However, survivors questioned why the exits had been shut, even though it was a free concert, and why the police officers at the scene, which numbered close to 3,000, hadn't intervened when the incident had become serious. King Mohammed VI extended his condolences to the victims' families and offered to pay for funeral and hospital costs. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be named in a song by your favorite artist or have a cameo on your favorite TV show? Let us know in the comments section below.